Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to give you some insight and a basic overview of one of the best activities I've done in a long time, an English class scavenger hunt. Hey everybody, I just got finished with one of the best classes that I've ever had. And I want to share with you what I did and why I think it works. While this feeling and this excitement is still fresh in my mind. Okay, so today I did a scavenger hunt with the students in my English winter camp. Uh, basically, during the scavenger hunt, I took task cards, right? These are question and answer cards that I made based on a movie from the Brain Pop ELL library. Yesterday was Monday. We watched the video and we did, you know, basic comprehension stuff in the classroom. And that's well and good. Everybody participated, they had a good time, but you know, it's pretty, pretty tough work and basically students sat in their chairs the whole time. At the end of the class I said, ah oh, man, students don't look like they had a really good time. They look like they had a regular English class. So I said, all right, what can I do to get students out of their seats? Well, normally in my classroom we do classroom scoots, which is where students move from desk to desk uh, answering questions with a 30 second timer. So I said, all right, that's fun, but we do that all the time in my English class. What can I do to make this even better? So I said, all right, I wanna get them out of their chairs. How about getting them out of the classroom? So what I did was I took those task cards, those fill in the blank questions, those multiple choice questions, matching questions, spelling questions, translation questions, and I put them up all around my school. I put them up outside of our English laboratory, the science rooms, the music classrooms, our library, the computer laboratory, all around the school. Then I came back to the classroom and I gave students some very basic instructions. I told them that, okay, on your paper, which you can see right here, there are 27 boxes and in each box, there's a location around the school. Now most students knew most places in most of the boxes, but they didn't know all of them. So I had to go over each place. Uh, I just translated it into Korean if they didn't know where it was. Then I had to match up. Two or three people worked best because when they're outside walking on their own, I don't want to have any struggling groups. I want to make sure that it's a similar level, similar ability level, but that there's somebody in there who's going to be able to read and understand almost every question. From there, I said, okay, everybody stand up, push in your chairs, and let's make a line. They lined up by group, and I let them go one by one. As I let them go, I gave them a starting point. So I said, group A, you start at the library. Group B, you start down in the science lab. Group C, you go to the principal's office. Uh, group D, you're in the cafeteria, and so on and so on. After that first location, students looked at the paper, and then they came up with the strategic roadmap uh, that would limit the amount of running around that they would have to do. Now, obviously, we don't want students running and screaming through the hallway. So before they left, I gave them those three golden rules. Rule number one was scoot. And just like riding a scooter, you're not running, but you're not really walking. It's that fine line in between. So scoot around the school, that was rule number one. Rule number two was look, but don't touch. Because they're out of my classroom, I didn't want them touching anything. I especially didn't want them touching the task cards. You know, they might rip it off the wall and then by accident put it in their pocket, on purpose put it in their pocket. So I said, you gotta look, but not touch. And rule number three, you had to whisper, not shout. So with those three rules in mind, walk, don't run, look, don't touch, whisper, don't shout, I felt pretty confident that I could let my students go and explore the school on their own. Now, I had two options. I could sit back in my chair and enjoy the, the warmth of a nice cup of coffee, or I could get out there and mix it up with students. So basically what I did was walk around the school and just provide some uh, friendly reminders to follow the rules and some coaching along the way for students who didn't really have a roadmap planned out, who were just going from place to place. 
And finally, I offered assistance and you know, a little bit of tutoring to any student who couldn't answer one of the task cards. Now, let me show you where I started. This is in my classroom. So the last task card, the one that brings them back home, was here. It was located on the front door to our classroom. So as you can see, the cards are colored and they stand out pretty easily. This was where they had to finish. Now, let me show you where some students started. To make sure that all of your students get back safely and without incident, you've got to remind them one more time before they leave the classroom of those top three golden rules. To walk and not run, to look and not touch, to whisper and not yell. As you can see, there's a simple picture instruction on the top. Step one is go to the place in the box. Step two is read the question. And step three is write the answer. And as you can see, box number one starts us off in the library. But as I said, students could start off in any place that I assign them. And once they go to that place, they could continue around the school in any order that they wanted, finding cards like this. What color is the paint? They'd simply write down yellow. Every card has a tip. Every card has a hint or a clue to help these students who are in a multi-level classroom and who might not be able to do the work on their own. We come to the orchestra room and we see who is angry. N-I-K-K-I, -I, that's Nikki. Nikki is angry. We turn across, this is our science laboratory A on the fourth floor. And the question card is here. Ben and Moby say, surprise, yes or no? Of course, that's a yes answer. And then students scoot around the hallway and down to the third grade hall. This is third grade, class one. And there is a test card on the front door. It says, what color does Nikki hate? And as you can see, it goes clockwise from G to R to E, E, N. Green, she hates the color green. And we move along to classroom number two. And there's a task card here. This one is multiple choice. It says, which is green? Coffee, bananas, rice, or grapes? The answer is D, grapes. Now, of course, some students might argue about the answers, and that's okay. If they're arguing, they're using English. If they're using English, we're achieving our objective. Okay, now students would be scooting around the school and walking carefully and quietly. Here come the stairs. And they'll go down the stairs until they find the next task card. They'll be looking at their roadmap and trying to figure out, okay, where should I go next? They might want to go on the second floor to the second grade classrooms. Now here, there's only one classroom from the second grade, class two dash two, question number 12. So let's find out what's the question. Here it is. Today is Nikki's 13th birthday. Yes or no? On the card, the picture has 14 candles. One candle is for good luck. So Nikki is 13. Students would circle yes or write yes on their task paper. And again, they continue along trying to find the cards all around the school. Now as they come here, they get a little extra quiet because this is the teacher's preparatory room. Now I gave the other teachers in my school a heads up to let them know that students would be coming around. And they find the card here. What flavor is the cake's icing? V-A-N-I-L-L-A, -L -L -A, vanilla icing. And if you let the other teachers in your school know that students will be moving around from place to place and maybe causing a little bit more noise than they're used to, it buys you a lot of grace from the other teachers. Just give them a heads up and most teachers are willing to let it slide. You're not doing this all day. You're not doing this every day. It's a great treat. Here's our school admin office that asks, which music does Nikki like? 
She likes the poppers, pop, 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 poppers. Then we came across to our art room that asks, yes or no, Moby is thinking. No, that's the boy, Ben. And again, if you use strategy, you'd be able to go from the admin office to the art room, and then very quickly over to the gym. That's really one of the keys to this activity. Not only are they using English to communicate and to answer the questions, but they've also got to figure out what's the best strategy. They don't want to just run into the activity. You want to encourage them to sit down and think about the most efficient path or the smartest path that they can take. And we'll finish up here at our school's turtles. As you can see, we got two little buddies here hanging out in the water. So I put the test card on the floor in front. It says, how many fingers does Moby have? On one hand, there are four fingers, and Moby has two hands. So of course, he's got eight fingers. And that's a basic run through of how your class or school scavenger hunt might work. As you can see from the video, I really liked this activity. It had elements of both collaboration and competition. Students had to work together with their partner or their teammates to answer academically rigorous English comprehension questions. But they also had to work together to beat the other teams. That scavenger hunt added an element of competition that they can't normally find in all of their classroom activities. And this was really an active activity. Students were up, out of their chairs, out of the classroom, and into the school. They were exploring different places that they knew, but that they didn't really know. They were finding out what things were called in English and learning how to navigate the school strategically with their teammates and with English. And with all of that having been said, I consider this activity a success. And I think you will too. I hope you give it a try. And if you do, let me know how it goes. Cheers and good luck.